Hello everyone, this is Dr. Srujana Dinakar. Welcome back to our public health series. In this video, I'll be briefly explaining about the evolution of public health, the supernatural theory of the disease. Since the knowledge was limited, the preventive man attributed disease and in fact all the human suffering and other calamities to the wrath of gods, the invasion of the body by evil spirits and the malevolent influence of stars and planets. Coming to Indian medicine, Ayurveda and Siddha system, Tridosho theory of disease, Vata, the wind, Pitta, gall, Kapha, the mucus, a person is said to be healthy if these three were in a perfect balance and harmony. Golden age of medicine was in between 800 BC and 600 AD. Other systems also include Yunani, the tip system introduced by Muslim rulers and homeopathy. Coming to Chinese medicine, world's first organized body of medical knowledge. It is based on two principles, Yang, active masculine principle, Yin, negative feminine principle. The balance of these two opposing forces meant good health. Coming to Egyptian medicine, they believed that the disease was due to absorption from the intestine of harmful substances. Egyptian built planned cities, public baths and underground drains. They have knowledge of importance of mosquito nets and association of plague with rats, later replaced by Greek medicine. Mesopotamian medicine, contemporary with ancient Egyptian civilization, there existed another civilization in Mesopotamia called as Cradle of Civilization around 6000 years ago. The basic concepts of medicine were religious and taught and practiced by herb doctors, knife doctors and spell doctors. Coming to Greek medicine, called as civilians of ancient world, they taught men to think in the terms of why and how. Greatest physician in Greek medicine was Hippocrates, the father of medicine. Greeks rejected the supernatural theory of disease and looked upon disease as natural process, not visitation from God of immolation. Coming to Roman medicine, Romans borrowed their medicine largely from Greeks, whom they had conquered. Public health was born in Rome with the development of baths, sewers, and aqueducts. They made fine roads throughout their empire, brought pure water to all their cities through aqueducts, drained marshes to combat malaria, built sewage systems and established hospitals for the sick. Coming to the Middle Ages, in between 500 and 1500 AD, the practice of medicine reverted to primitive medicine dominated by superstition and dogma. Consequently, there was no progress in medicine. This period is called as the Dark Ages of Medicine. When Europe was passing through the Dark Ages, the Arabs stole a march over the rest of the civilization. They developed their own system of medicine known as Yunani system of medicine. They founded schools of medicines and hospitals. The greatest contribution of the Arabs was in the field of pharmacology. During these Middle Ages, the spread of Christianity led to the establishment of hospitals, also religious institutions known as monasteries came up. Now, coming to the most important part, the dawn of scientific medicine. Revival of the medicine, 1453 to 1600 AD. Paracelsus, the attacked superstition and dogma. Fractastorius, the founder of epidemiology, enunciated the theory of contagion. Andreas Vassilus did a lot of dissections on the human body. Ambroise Paré earned the title of father of surgery. Harvey's discovery of the circulation of the blood. Leeuwenhoek's microscope. Jenner's vaccination against the smallpox. Sanitary awakening. Great sanitary awakening took place in the England during mid-19th century and gradually spread to the other countries. Chadwick's report on the sanitary conditions of the labouring population in Great Britain, a landmark in the history of public health, set London and other cities slowly on the way to improve housing and working conditions. This eventually led to the enactment of Public Health Act of 1848 in England. The rise of public health. John Snow's study on epidemiology of cholera. William Budd concluded that the spread of typhoid was due to drinking water. By the beginning of 20th century, broad foundations of public health were laid in all the countries of the Western world. Germ theory of the disease. Louis Pasteur demonstrated the presence of bacteria in air in 1860. He disapproved the theory of spontaneous generation. Robert Koch in 1877 showed that the anthrax was caused by bacteria. 
golden era of bacteriology. Discoveries gonococcus in 1847, typhoid bacillus and pneumococcus in 1880, tubercle bacillus in 1882, cholera vibrio in 1883, diphtheria bacillus in 1884. The birth of preventive medicine. James Lind experiment proved that the intake of vegetables and fruits help in prevention of scurvy in 1753 Edward Jenner discovered vaccination for smallpox the preventive medicine got a firm foundation only after the discovery of causative agents of diseases and the establishment of germ theory disease now coming to the modern medicine curative medicine primary objective is the removal of disease from the patient preventive medicine Preventive medicine is applied to the healthy people customarily by actions affecting large number or populations. Primary objective is prevention of disease and promotion of health. Social medicine it is the study of the man as a social being in his total environment. Now coming to the phases of public health. Disease control phase from 1882 to 1920. Health promotional phase 1920 to 1960. social engineering phase 1960 to 1980 health for all phase 1981 to 2080 disease control phase sanitary reforms aimed at man's physical environment water supply sewage disposal etc these measures vastly improved the health of the people due to disease and death control health promotional phase In addition to disease control activities health promotion of individuals is added as goal of public health initiated as mother and child health services school health services industrial health services etc coming to social engineering phase chronic diseases like cancer diabetes etc begin to emerge so the social and behavioral aspects of diseases and health were given a new priority Public health moved to preventive and rehabilitate aspects of chronic diseases and behavior problems. Health for all phase to eliminate the gap between the rich and the poor within the countries and between the countries. The member of WHO, the World Health Organization in 1981 pledged to an ambitious target to provide health for all by the year 2000 that is the attainment of a level of health that will permit all people and led to socially and economically productive life.